they, they don't want to be in the news. They, they don't want people to talk about them. They don't want to be anywhere on the radar. Why not? I don't know, but I suspect it's probably because it's easier to do things when people aren't thinking about it. All of these financial institutions, they buy politicians. You can take this big ton of money and then you can start to buy people. I work for uh, a company called BlackRock. Meet Serge Varley, a recruiter at BlackRock. Let me tell you, it's not through who's the president. It's who's controlling the, the wallet. So it's, it's the, and who's that? Like, the hedge funds, BlackRock, the banks. These guys are campaign financing. Yep, you can buy your candidates. Obviously, we have the system in place. First, there's the Senate. And these guys are rich. You got 10 grand, you can buy a senator. I could give you 500k right now. No question to ask. Yeah. Uh, I didn't do it, so we're done. Does like everybody do that? Does Blackhawk do that? Uh, it doesn't matter who wins. They're so good. They're, they're my popular this point. Here's Serge Varley on how good war is for Blackrock's business. Do you have any um, thoughts on the Ukraine-Russia war? Yeah, I mean, I, I do have thoughts. What, it, what are they? Yeah. Ukraine is good for business. You, you know, right? I'll, I'll give an example. Russia Russia blows up Ukraine's grain silos. Price of wheat is going to go mad up. The Ukrainian economy is tied very largely to the wheat market, global wheat market. Mm -hmm. Prices of bread, of, you know, it, literally everything is, it goes up and down. This is fantastic if you're trading. Volatility creates opportunity to make profit. War is real f***ing good for, for, for business. It's exciting when shit goes wrong, right? BlackRock manages 20 trillion. It's incomprehensible numbers. BlackRock Serge Varley says all of this is above a normal person's understanding. You're like an undercover reporter. I don't know, no, 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 no people don't give a shit. This is, this is beyond them. The whole thing of like domination from a concept is just it's, it's so f interesting. Hi, I'm James O'Keefe with OMG News. Here we are with our latest story, this time on BlackRock, one of the world's leading asset and investment managers, which owns significant shares of companies like Amazon, Microsoft, Anheuser-Busch, Meta, Target, Procter & Gamble, Comcast, CNN, Fox, and yes, Pfizer, just to name a few. At OMG, we do not shy away from exposing powerful companies, and we're not afraid of powerful people. So we decided to take a look for ourselves at the influence BlackRock has on our politics and the influence they have on our culture. So to do that, what better place to start a hidden camera investigation than into a self-described gatekeeper at BlackRock. Like, you're kind of like a f***ing gatekeeper at BlackRock. Yeah, I am. I, I decide people's fates. Every f***ing day, I literally decide how somebody's life is going to be shaped. That's so powerful. I love it. Yeah, it's... it's I don't know, the, the whole thing of, like, domination from a concept is just, it's, it's just so interesting. Introducing Serge Varley whose LinkedIn says he's worked for Morgan Stanley, Citadel, and now as a recruiter at BlackRock. I work for uh, a company called BlackRock. Uh, I'm not actually a finance guy. I just, I know what happens because I'm recruiting people who do these things. Mm -hmm. I'm the person who headhunts people from other firms, so I would approach him and be like, hey, this is a good reason why you should come work for us. Serge tells us who really runs the world how they do it, and just how much it costs to buy people, like politicians. Let me tell you, it's not through who's the president. It's, it's who's controlling the, the wallet. So it's, it's the, and who's like, that? The hedge funds, BlackRock, the banks. These guys are campaign financing. Yep, you can buy your candidates. How so? All of these financial institutions, they buy politicians. How do they run the world? You acquire stuff. You diversify, you acquire, you keep acquiring, you spend whatever you make in acquiring more. And at a certain point, your rest club is, is super low. Like, imagine you've invested in um, like 10 different industries from food to 
to drinks to like technology right one one of them fails it doesn't matter you have nine others to, to pick you up risk management is, is inherently in just about everything and in the finance space it's all about it's, it's, it's well it's all about the money you make you don't you don't let it sit You're like you keep using it over and over and reinvest just, yeah and it exponential growth and then once you just own a little bit of everything is that where the control yeah. you own a little bit of everything and that little bit of everything gives you so much money on a yearly basis that you can take this big ton of money and then you can start to buy people obviously we have this system in place first there's the senate space. and these guys are you got 10 grand you can buy a senate it doesn't matter who wins they're still gonna... they're, they're my popular list. I could give you 500k right now, no questions asked. Yeah. Are you gonna do what needs to be done? They're like, yeah, of course. And Why not? Does like everybody do that? Does BlackRock do that? The BlackRock recruiter also tells us about how the U.S. government relies on BlackRock for their economic simulation computational power. Economic simulation. They need to understand the impact of something, right? They're gonna like raise the interest rate, for example. Mm -hmm. It's gonna create this cascade of various factors that people are they're not sure what's gonna do, basically. And just how f***ing great the Ukraine war is for business. Do you have any um, thoughts on the Ukraine-Russia war? Ukraine is good for business. You, you know, right? We don't want the conflict to, to, to end. Why? We don't want the conflict to end as a country. The longer this goes on, the weaker Russia is. I'll give an example. Russia, Russia blows up Ukraine's grain silos. Price of wheat's gonna go mad up. So what are you gonna do if you're a trading firm? The moment that news hits, within a millisecond, you're gonna pump, you're gonna pump trades into um, into uh, whoever the wheat suppliers are into their stocks. Within an hour or two, that stock goes up and then you sell and you just made, I don't know, however many milk. Why would a news channel promote a side in war? Because it's also good for business too. I mean, what, what's news? News, right? What does news feed on? They feed on strategy, they feed on up events. That's what people like to watch. So when it happens, it's, it's good business. More viewers. When nothing's happening, watch news. I don't watch news. So they're all pushing like the same talking point. Like you generally when you look at news like it's propaganda. The Ukrainian economy is tied very largely to the wheat market, global wheat market. This is fantastic if you're trading. Volatility creates opportunity to make profit. War is real f***ing good for, for, for business. It's exciting when shit goes wrong, right? Surge also speaks on BlackRock-influenced news and even gave our journalists some tips. Based on everything we know now, uh -huh. when they say to sell, does you know, that mean we should buy? So, yeah, it's like, uh, you know Jim Cramer? If you do uh, exactly the opposite of what he's advising, you actually make money. Huh? Yeah. It's, it's like, it's called the, the inverse Cramer. They don't want to be in the news. They, they don't want people to talk about them. They don't want to be anywhere on, on the radar. Why not? I don't know, but I suspect it's probably because it's easier to do things when people aren't thinking about it. And when Surge was asked about insider trading, and if Larry Fink recently sold $100 million in BlackRock shares, here is what he said. Larry Fink recently sold $100 million worth of BlackRock. Oh, uh, wow. Damn, Larry, that's not a good sign. The people who trade and make money, they do this the moment the information is out. And that info is typically, typically disseminated at private levels first before it gets the mm -hmm. information. If you want to invest smart, there's a tracker that tracks all politicians and where they have their stocks. Preemptively, if the stock price, if we think the stock price is going to tank, we're going to sell so that so that we, we sell it high, it tanks, and we buy back. And we made, well, we didn't make, but we preserved, preserved a few mil. But perhaps the most remarkable, profound comment by the BlackRock recruiter is the suggestion that nobody is going to care about what he is saying here or confessing here. Because as he says, quote, 
Normal people don't give a shit. You're like a undercover reporter. Really? No, no, don't normal people worry about this stuff? No, 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 no normal people don't give a shit. This is, this is beyond them. That these types of questions my reporter asked are beyond all of you. The answer is something that you, the people, the consumers, the shareholders, couldn't possibly understand. It's been said that it's easier to fool a man than to convince him he's been fooled. There is no question that many Americans are still asleep who may not want to wake up from their necessary illusions. But we hope and believe by showing these tapes of this BlackRock gatekeeper speaking so plainly on so many topics that not only we wake up people, but also inspire others to come forward on institutions like BlackRock. Oh, and this is just part one. Stay tuned tomorrow for my meeting with Serge Barlet. We also reached out for comment to BlackRock, and here's what they had to say.